I did a YouTube video last week all around losing weight in your 50s and I'm going to link to it here. This video is around how to improve your sleep in your 50s. So let me ask you a question. Are you a female over 50 who's struggling with getting consistently good sleep? Do you get eight hours, nine hours of sleep a night or are you being woken up? Are you getting disturbed sleep? Are you having trouble getting off to sleep? Maybe you're waking up two o'clock and you can't get back to sleep. All of the things. Because before you start embarking on a nutrition program or exercise program or doing all the things to improve your health, sleep is almost the top of your priority list. Because when you get poor sleep, you know as well as I do, it just affects everything. It affects your personality, your mood, your cravings, your relationships, your energy levels, how you show up for the world, your personality, your hormone levels, everything is affected when you get chronic bad sleep, night after night, week after week, month after month, year after year. So this video is to give you some practical tips and tricks that you can take back the power and improve your sleep and make your sleep a priority. And then once you've nailed your sleep hygiene and you're getting better quality sleep, then you can start to address your nutrition. It will be much easier to then work on your nutrition. It will be much easier to embark on an exercise program because you'll have the energy. Hormone levels will be better. You'll feel brighter. Your mind will be clear. You'll feel more positive. All of the things. So number one, let's give you some top tips. So number one is, are you looking at your phone late at night? Are you lying in bed scrolling? If you are, the blue light is going into your eyes and that's disturbing your brain. And as your brain powers down and goes into sleep mode, it usually takes about 90 minutes to go through that cycle. But the blue light affects that. So the brain almost never powers down and you don't get that deep sleep, that REM sleep. So having a rule where you stop looking at your phone maybe two hours before bed and what about, try this one, what about having your phone out of the room, maybe just out of the room. So if it rings, if there's an emergency, then you'll hear it, it'll wake you up. But ultimately, taking your phone away from your bedroom, if you wake up in the night and go to the toilet, how many times do you look at your phone? Do you look at your phone? And you know, as soon as that blue light hits your eyes, boom, you're wide awake. So you won't have that temptation if it's out of the room. Also in the morning, when you wake up, if you use your phone to wake up, what's the first thing you do? You switch the alarm off and then you start scrolling. And then that anxiety starts again. You know, you're not in charge of your day. You're looking at social media and that causes all kinds of anxiety and just doesn't give you the best start to the day. So let's take your phone out of the equation and put it away and not look at it for a few hours before you go to sleep. And let me know how you get on with that one. The second thing that's a game changer is what you're eating in an evening. If you have a really big meal towards bedtime, then the food is going to still be being digested. So while your body is trying to sleep and your brain is trying to sleep, you'll also be digesting the food. And so that has a massive impact on your sleep and the quality of sleep that you have. So can you bring your dinner time just that bit earlier so that you're eating at maybe six o'clock or seven o'clock and then you allow two or three hours where you don't eat anything, you don't go into the kitchen, you don't have any nighttime nibbling or evening snacks, you stop eating and then go to sleep and try that for a few weeks and I know that will make a massive, massive difference. Are you exercising? Are you walking? I highly recommend that you're getting your 10,000 steps in and you're getting some daylight and you're getting some vitamin D. Even if it's raining outside here in the UK, the weather is not great, but still getting outside and walking, getting your steps in getting sunlight coming into your eyes, that will have an impact on your sleep also. Something that people ask me all the time is around supplements. So supplements, again, so important if you're struggling with your sleep. So I'm going to give you two of my favorite supplements. So this one is, now this been, has this been a game changer for me and it's ashwagandha. And can you see it? And I'll link to these in the, in the description box below. Ashwagandha, wow. This is a phenomenal supplement to help manage menopausal symptoms. Phenomenal. So if you take an ashwagandha tablet in the morning and maybe mid-afternoon, it just helps your body manage cortisol. It helps you feel quite calm. It helps you feel less anxious. It helps you calm down. So it's going to affect your sleep. 
And if you take this consistently for three, four weeks, I know you're going to see an improvement in your sleep. It really is. And then the second supplement that I highly recommend is magnesium. Oh my gosh, this one, and I'll link to it, another game changer. I've been taking this at about seven o'clock and to be honest, in an evening, and to be honest, I am completely knocked out. It's the best sleep and I struggle with my sleep and I've been struggling with my sleep for decades, but taking this magnesium, it's an absolute game changer. You wake up feeling rested and calm and relaxed and you've had great quality sleep. So these two combined are game changers and I highly recommend them. If you haven't taken ashwagandha and you are postmenopausal and you're struggling a bit with overwhelm, anxiety, loads of cortisol, your heart's racing, you know, you, you've got these high energy up and down all the way through the day. This is awesome. And to really maximize your sleep and make sure that you're getting good quality sleep, then the magnesium is also a game changer. So I would try those, give them a go for maybe three weeks, four weeks, and I know that you're going to see a massive improvement in your sleep. And if you've got any questions around sleep, then do let me know, I'm interested. So if you, if you take your health and all of the big rocks of health, if we were to say, okay, over the next year, we're going to focus on improving our health and our well-being. The first thing to do is improve your sleep. And once we're getting good quality sleep night after night, week after week, then as I said at the beginning, this is going to have an impact on your energy. You can have more energy. So you're going to feel inclined to get up in the morning and do some walking or do a workout. You're going to be more inclined to make healthy choices. You're going to make healthy choices because your brain is not so tired and exhausted because you've had a restful sleep. So you'll make more healthy choices. You're going to show up more positively. So your relationships, your friendships, is all going to improve when you get better sleep. You're going to be more resilient, so you can manage stress so much better. So when those stressful situations hit you, you're going to be able to handle it and deal with it. So my top tips for you to improve your, your sleep are uh, limit your phone use in the evening, don't wake up with your phone, have your evening meal a bit earlier, and look at these two amazing supplements because I know that these are going to help you massively. So let me know in the comments if that was helpful. Um, check out my former video around how to improve your weight loss in your 50s and this video around how to improve your sleep in your 50s. Let me know what your thoughts are. I would love to hear.